Today you're in for a treat. We are talking about piping. What type of pipe are we gonna use? Are you ready to bust up some pipe? <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. Today you're in for a treat. We are talking about piping. Oh, it doesn't sound exciting, but actually picking out the right pipe is just as important as having the right pump, the right skimmer filter, the right bio filter, because that piping is connect all those different things together and it will increase or decrease the efficiency of the overall system. Let's go check out our local home improvement stores. Hi there. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. Hello darkness, my old friend see what they have to offer, and then we can start our test. So what we want to make sure of, I want to go with at least a 200 PSI or greater for our application. Schedule 40, so it's 280 PSI. 200 PSI stuff is a little bit less expensive. What you want to be careful of though is drainage pipe. It has a thinner wall, so it may not be able to handle the abuse that we're going to be talking about. So let's get a few sticks of this. All right, we have 50 feet of PVC pipe. Now what we're gonna need is a bunch of elbows because you can see how rigid this material is. We're gonna need to get from point A to point B, but in a typical construction project, you have obstacles. So you're gonna have patios, you're gonna have boulders, you're gonna have trees, you're gonna have old stumps, you're gonna have existing things on the property. So you're gonna need to jog that piping around to make sure that you can get from the pumping system all the way to the biofilter. So let's go pick out some plumbing parts. contractor this is pretty typical I have all of my tools all my equipment inside of here but now what I have to do I got to get this pipe inside of here these are 10 foot long sticks I have a six foot bed so I have to actually pull some of this stuff apart get those pipes all the way in they're gonna be sticking out the back of this thing thankfully we only have a short drive had some great stuff talking about skimmers and we're talking about pumps and figuring out the right flow rates but now the next piece is the piping we don't think about it too often it's just a method of moving water but actually choosing the right pipe will make a huge difference on the installation time the efficiency the efficiency of the pumping system how long it takes to connect all these different pieces and parts and then also potential weak points we also want to talk about freeze thaw because here we're located in Chicago brutally cold winters so we we have a crazy freeze thaw cycle and from years past i've been doing this for 30 plus years now i have definitely seen my share of broken pipes and it was because things weren't drained out and it was because the piping wasn't specced out properly and that's why we're here doing the testing what type of pipe are we going to use the efficiency of the installation uh, actually on the job site from hooking up the pump going all the way over to the biofilter how many elbows how many joints how many connections how much pipe am i going to use also the back pressure the tdh is created by all those different 90 degree elbows. When I'm talking about water velocity flying down pipe systems, every time water hits a 90 degree elbow, it slows down. Picks up speed again, gonna hit another 90 degree elbow, and then it's gonna slow down, and then it picks up speed again. So it's this constant battle, and all that stuff puts pressure on your pump system. We wanna create an efficient system that goes in smoothly, that could resist the freeze thaw, and it's gonna be very cost effective to work with. It's also impact. When we're talking about piping systems, our construction jobs are brutal. Commercial job sites, you could have vehicles driving back and forth. Even in your backyard, you could have mowers, you could have people having access. You don't want to have a rigid pipe system that could potentially crack. The final thing is obviously it's going to have to be the flow because having the right diameter of pipe is going to be critical to allow all that water flow to go through the system. So I want to make sure that we're getting all the water that we're paying for. Those pumps, they cost money to operate on a daily basis. I want to get the maximum flow out of that pump system so I could have the maximum benefit from a water quality standpoint. I like flexibility when I'm designing a 
water feature because things automatically pop up. The first piping system that we're gonna be talking about is actually going to be a rigid pipe system. But what I wanna do highlight is kind of the typical setup. So we have our mocked up pond system. Again, this is just a tub, not one of our backyard ecosystems. This is just for testing purposes. We have the winner of the pump test. The Aquasurge 5000 definitely showed its colors in that and it was phenomenal. What we have, again, typical backyard, you have a home, the pond is gonna be located close to the house. Power may or may not be accessible. On our job site today, I'm gonna to say the power is in the corner of the house, which is why our pump is gonna be located in this one particular corner. The other reason I have that is we don't actually have a stream, but let's pretend that biofalls is gonna connect back over this way with a stream system and enter the pond back in this section where you could actually visualize the waterfall. So we're gonna to have to get our piping system from that pump to that filter, but let's walk through and see some of these obstacles. Follow me. Two inch discharge. This is not buried below grade. So normally the pond would be recessed and the plumbing would come straight out at grade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out, do a 90, drop straight down, and then I'm gonna come across to the building and I'm gonna go along this back wall. And then we're gonna cut between some of these shrubs. We're gonna to try to make our way this way because we have fencing and stuff over there. We have bedrock. Not everybody's gonna hit bedrock in their backyards, but it happens. And sometimes you may not even know it's there until you start doing trenching. Then all of a sudden you're gonna hit all this stuff and you have to manipulate your excavation. So we have bedrock right over here, which is why I couldn't come directly out with my piping. I had to go that way. There's an old tree that was here. They didn't remove the stump. So that means there's that big root flare underground. So I don't even wanna mess with that stuff. So I'm gonna make a hard 90 to the fence. Come over over here we have the fence I'm gonna make another 90 start coming this way remember I'm trying to get over to my biofalls but now there's a patio in the way so you're working around existing structures we're gonna make another 90 degree another large old tree that was here stump is still there we got to go way past it all the way to the fence now we're gonna make another 90 come this way and now we have to weave our way through these trees as well and then finally, we are gonna make it into the back of our biofilter. I wanna see what type of impact it actually has on our flow rate. So I'm gonna have that Aquasurge 5000. We're actually gonna measure the flow rate on this guy to see what happens. Then this is gonna fill up with water, it's just gonna dump into this little tank, and then we'll stop our test. Then we're gonna do the exact same test using flexible PVC, which use the same glued in type joints, but we're only gonna have two joints instead of all of these 90s and elbows and stuff like that. So I'm definitely interested to see how long it's gonna take me to install it, as well as the efficiency over the overall system. Let's go start putting some pipe together. One of the things you want to be conscious of is you want to make sure that you hold the piping in place for a few seconds because what's going to happen during that chemical reaction it kind of heats up a little bit and what's going to do it's going to want to push itself off so the coupling is going to want to push itself off of the pipe so you will actually see it slide out a little bit but you don't want to have that happen so you want to make sure you hold it for a few seconds both sides till it's good and stable and then you're in good shape again the things that i'm always doing you can see i have all these burrs on here because i i just cut this piece of pipe so i have a lot of cuts i'm going to have to do but all these little burrs could cause problems because the tolerances in between the inside diameter of this and the outside diameter of that is very, very tight. And you can see right now, it does not even want to go on. I cannot push it on there. Now, obviously I don't have glue or anything like that on there, which is going to act as a lubricant. So what you're going to want to do, and you can see these things sticking out. So you're going to want to come through with a file, whatever is handy for you. Definitely, I'm not a union plumber. I have put in a lot of piping over the years, but I just kind of round that edge off. When you're doing your cleaning, you see there's, there's a ridge inside of there. So I'm gonna go all the way up to that. And then as you're doing this, all you need to do is go right to the tip of your finger. There's no need to go way back here. You try to do enough, but not to overdo it. these lines here you can see how the pipe is marked this is set at the apex basically of that edge so you can see where that seam is at so i'm going to glue this one right in center line and i slide it down and i could glue that piece and i know everything is going to be good especially when you have lots of elbows and things like that you want to be super conscious if it's just tweaked down a little bit or up in the wrong direction it's going to start sending your pipe off in a different direction so everything has got to be in the same exact plane otherwise you're going to have problems if you have not done this before if you're doing your pond on your own for your first time be super conscious of this you're going to want to take your time and 
and make sure all these different things line up in order to give you the desired results. All right, let's start going up. So actually, I'm just installing pipe right now, which is not that difficult. I'm not even doing the trenching. So remember, if you're doing trenching, you're gonna be digging all of this stuff out beforehand, and then you're gonna start installing your piping. So you have to follow everything. So this is actually a little bit easier than it actually would be on a real world job. So. Ready to test out this system. Let's see what it does. I hear water. Good even flow of water. 3.7. All right, next test. Flexible PVC pipe is in place. Let's plug it in. We are at twice the rate. We were at 23.7. We are pushing 45. Well, it's actually dropping down because we're getting a little bit more back pressure on it. Yeah, that's significant to me. See the water thickness coming over. Or is it a better overall flow? That was a significant difference when we start talking about gallons per minute. So we were actually 15, 13 and a half, 14 gallons per minute more flow just by going with that flexible PVC. And the reason is simple. We don't have all of those elbows in place. So all of those elbows basically act as speed bumps. They are slowing the water velocity down. When we're talking about a piping system, we wanna keep even velocity going through the entire system because it's less stress on all the joints. And then also look at that nice easy curve. So again, good flow rate going through everything. We don't have all the joints, which are all potential leak points. The installation time is considerably faster. I'm talking uh, logarithmic faster minutes versus hours instead of having all of these glued connections I have two one at the bio falls and then I have one at my pumping system now obviously if you start going more than 50 feet 100 feet whatever it happens to be you will need a few couplings in between but you could make very very quick work of any type of a piping installation the other thing it's going to conform to a wide variety of scenarios we are ready for the next phase of our testing impact resistance this is going to be good stuff i'm going to try it out with a pickaxe i'm also going to do it with a boulder or a rock to see exactly the impacts that these pipes can handle safety first got my safety glasses on i'm ready to go Now, clearly, nobody willingly is going to hit a piece of PVC with a mattock or a pickaxe, but construction job sites, you're digging out trenches, you could be trenching through something, you inadvertently hit the pipe, it's gonna shatter. All right, we had another fun day of doing that old school R&D. This is stuff that we were doing years and years ago, but it's still, it's important information because we forget about it. For all the new people out there and because of social media and the platforms that we have, we wanna make sure that everybody has the information necessary to make an educated decision on all your purchases to make sure that you have a good time and enjoyment with your water feature. So I think the results on this, again, speak for themselves in my opinion. It is 100% the reason that we switched over to this material many, many years ago. And the results, again, speak for themselves. Over on the one side of the chart, we have Aquascape 2 inch Flex PVC. We compared it to our standard Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Big difference in price. We're over double for the Flex PVC. But as we go through all this information, I want you to try to understand the difference in the cost and where you're actually 
actually saving money. Over $200 more for the Aquascape Flex PVC. But the next one, look at that next category there. The labor, the efficiency of the installation time. Literally five minutes for me to make one connection, roll the pipe out, make the second connection. I don't have all those joints. I don't have all the cuttings and I don't have all that stuff going in between. Again, what's your time worth? If you're a consumer or if you're a professional, where is that cost savings? The other thing is each and every one of those joints is a potential failure point. Having all those elbows and those 90 degrees and all that stuff, it slows the water velocity down. And again, check out the numbers from this. With the Flex PVC, we're flowing at almost 3,800 gallons per hour of flow rate. 50 feet of pipe, two foot of elevation change from the top of water level to top of water level. With all of those elbows and bends and all that stuff, it drops down to about 3,200 gallons per hour. So 600 GPH difference, that is significant. And if you're paying for that pumping velocity, if you're paying for the pump, we're paying the same cost for both of these, but one of them, you're actually getting more water flow. It's running through your filtration system. It's increasing the overall dissolved oxygen. It's increasing the overall turnover rate, which therefore is gonna give you better water quality. The next test, super, super obvious. It was the impact test. You take something, you hit it with a pick, and if it's a rigid pipe, it is gonna shatter. You are 100% going to break that piping because it is a rigid type pipe system success on the flexible PVC because it flexes. It has give. You could actually run it over. I actually have that stuff out on construction job sites and I'm running it over with excavators. I am using that stuff all the time and what happens is, and I'm not saying it's good for it, but it's compressing the pipe down. It doesn't actually make it fail. The final one was this little test that I did at my personal home over the weekend. I wanted to test the freeze resistance. I capped off one end, cap on the other end, but I had a threaded connection. I was able to fill this with water, threw it in the deep freezer, froze it solid, no issue, no cracking, no leakage or anything. Now the standard schedule 40 PVC, look at this. These two caps were actually installed the exact same time. What happens when water gets to that 32 degree mark, the water molecule itself forms like a lattice structure. It expands itself out. It's going to push itself on all the surrounding areas. So what happened inside of our piping here, the ice actually expanded because this was totally full of water and it actually busted the joint. It forced that PVC joint apart. The other thing that it did, and I don't know if you can make it out here, but there is a half a dozen or so micro cracks so these little tiny hairline cracks right along here. And it's because this does not flex. You go up into the mountains where water actually freezes in the cracks of granite rock. It will shatter granite stone. The power of this stuff is unbelievable. It actually shapes our earth on a daily basis. And the effects of it, you can see here, you can't resist it, which is why flexible PVC is clearly superior. <laughs> It's because it has give. Am I saying that this is 100% freeze proof? No, but this is 100% with certainty. Unless you're gonna drain and blow out all your lines and then cap those lines, this will 100% crack on you. Talking about the cost of these things, there's costs associated with it, but in my mind, again, I, I think it's worth every penny to pay for a superior product because I know it's gonna deliver the results that I'm looking for. It's installation time, efficiency of the pumping system, not having all those elbows, it's eliminating joints and things like that. So all these different things, things actually add up to give you a really good clear understanding of why we do what we do and that's exactly why hopefully you're listening to me here as the pond professor. I want to share with you all of these things that I've learned over 30 years of designing and building water features. So I hope you enjoyed this cool little experiment and I will see you on the next project.